What's up guys? I'm gonna go head down to the pro shop right now, hang out at Ross Outdoors for a bit. I've got the new PSE Fortis in the back. Uh, I'm gonna get that thing all set up and get it ready for hunting season. All right, we have arrived. We're gonna... That was scary. I'm gonna take everything, here it is, new Fortis. Gonna take everything off of this bow, which is my XF33, and we're gonna put it on this bow. It's my favorite bow tech. Well, you had your head down. I couldn't see the luscious locks, so I didn't know. This this is Grady. Grady works on all of my bows. Hi there. He, he's the man. Come bug him at Ross for anything that you need. I've got your back for all your archery needs. <laughs> all right, we're gonna get this. We got the new PSE Fortis right here. We're gonna get that all set up. Take everything off the XF33 and put it on here. Gotta move freak nasty. This dinosaur is just casually sitting in their archery range. That is apparently a strip buck. Okay. Look at that thing. I'm afraid to drop it. Holy crap, gosh dang. That's what dreams are made of in the mule deer woods. <laughs> God, you are getting old. I dropped to 65 pounds. Grady's giving me crap. It just feels good, man. True that. We are gonna <laughs> you guys are gonna give me. I've seen you for three seconds. You're already cracking jokes. <laughs> We're gonna paper tune this bow now. <laughs> This is the first shot right here. So we are gonna use PSE, kind of switched up their cam uh, design deal down there. You can like tune, what is that called, Grady? Um, it's got an acronym, but I can't remember it. Basically, it is a clip axle system to where instead of the old school way of pulling an E-clip, I can loosen that, I'll call it a top hat bolt. I can, little t-handle tool that they got i can index it there pull the spacer bring it over and then put a new one in you do have to have a bow press for it just so that we can safely relieve tension off the bow so don't do it at home bring it into a pro shop we'll gladly help you we've got all the tools and the different size spacers but we're going to use it to fix that point right Then there's your little index guy. Put it in here on the side and then pull towards me. And now my spacer comes out. Look at that. Voila. That's, that's and neat. now I have movement of that cam oh. to where I can slide it over. Um, there's a great video that um, a local guy, Gaius Carter, works for PSE now. He did at ATA showing this video um, at the PSC booth at ATA. So if a little bit more in depth of it, mm. jump on PSC's Instagram and you'd be able to see that. I remember seeing that. Yeah. Gaius knows his stuff and he did a very good job of showing that. So now index or spacer into the fancy dancy tool. Pay attention to where you're clipping it and then just push straight forward at the cam pop on your spacer. Ta-da! Nice and quick and easy and pretty. So you popped it in right here? Yep. Right? Okay. Because mm -hmm. you have to have that side facing out because if it doesn't face out you can't index the tool back on. 
Yep. And it will create an aggressive amount of cam length because you got to imagine you'd end up putting that much space and it wouldn't be on the axle. So, again, that's why you have to come to a pro shop and we'll do it for you just to make sure that things are installed correctly and everyone's being safe in what they're doing. Same thing on this side. And then you can see there's still a little bit of movement on the cam. Yep. All of that is from loosening that axle just to make sure, again, that we're being safe about everything and we're good. That's all we have to do. We're gonna see though. Take another shot through paper. So this right here is where we ended up. So that was at six yards. We started at three yards. Then we moved back to six yards to amplify any inconsistency there. So why are we starting at three yards and then going to six yards after that? So with three yards, we're shooting so close, it isn't as critical. Um, you can almost get any bow to shoot a bullet hole at three yards. Um, just something we've found over the years is going from three, getting it to shoot a bullet hole, and then backing up to six really amplifies the arrow flight, making sure that the form of the shooter is good, um, cam lean it, make sure that everything is perfect before the customer goes out the door. And it also, like in Josh's case, it has helped immensely with people going out and having to deal with the frustration of broadhead tuning. A lot of the time, uh, shooting a good broadhead, once we've done the three and six yard tune, we're able to kind of eliminate a lot of the headaches that that can cause. All right, so Grady is tying in a knock set right now. Why do we tie in a knock set, Grady? So, our super fancy reasoning behind this is, basically when we draw a bow back, we could create a really big triangle. You gotta imagine your arrow going to the back of that triangle. We've got two wedges here. We've got the top and bottom knots of your D-loop. When you draw it back, you can pinch your knock and it will actually lift the arrow off of the rest. And that can create a lot of weird stuff when it comes to paper tuning, arrow flight, especially broadhead flight. So we have to make sure that we can mitigate that the best way possible, which is tying a knock set. So you'll tie the way we prefer to do it. You'll do three overhand knots underneath, two overhand knots on top, and then you want about a serving width distance between the top knot and that knock, so that ends up being about 19 thousandths of an inch. There you go, knock sets with Grady. What, uh, what are we doing here with these levels, Grady? So at the current moment, we are making sure that all of the sight axes are level to the bow. So what we can run into with the axis I'm currently checking, which is considered first axis on this site, the bow is level, both side to side, forward and back. And if I place this level here, we can see that I'm barely biased off to that right side. The problem that that will create is this is not level to the bar mounted to the bow. So if I dial this site down, it will get incrementally worse as I go out also, it will be moving my pins off to the right incrementally. So if you think about it as a triangle, I'm heading off to the right side of that triangle. And a lot of times we'll have guys come in and they'll say, hey, I shoot great with my fixed pins and then all of a sudden I go out to distance and when I dial my sight, I start missing off to the right or to the left, whichever way it's not level to. So what's happening is <laughs> if this isn't level, when you dial, it's basically going down on an angle. Yeah, so imagine this pin like coming down at a 10 degree angle yep. this way, and then it's going to cause some weird right and left stuff. And now, if I come in here and crack that loose, 
and this is specific to this site, but most other dovetail mount sites have the ability to do this. Um, black gold spot hogs, excels, etc. You can see that bubble sitting there right in the center. And then hold the housing always and then I can tighten it. The true skill in this is not leveling the site, it's not messing it up when you go to tighten the bolts. But now, if you can see here, this is a good physical representation of it, the bar and the elevation for the slider are level. Look at the site level. It's nowhere near. So you'd be having to do a sideways cant pretty aggressive to be able to get the bow level, which generally will cause a bias in aero flight. We'll start tailing off whichever direction we're leaning to. So on black golds, they make it nice and easy for us. We'll loosen these two face screws, and then I'm able to wedge that to where I can see if I'm pretty close to level, which we're pretty stinking close. I'll come to this side so I don't keep bumping the camera for everybody. We're good there. And again, nice and snug. Nice and snug there. Check it to make sure it didn't bias to one way. One way I like to do it is I can tap the bow and then slow it back down because if I have a bias, it's going to sit off to one side, which it's not. And now we will take the new Hamski Gen 3 level that everyone should get. I will affix it down here so that we can get our third axis pretty stinking close. You notice I'm above all of the barrel lugs. I'm just mounting straight on the riser so that we don't create any bias to that level. Then I will lean the bow forward. I will get it nice and level and I will clamp it there. And now this is our third axis that we're gonna attack right now. So we can see it's bias off to that side. If I come over to this side, there's a little screw and I can change the pitch of this housing, which basically is making sure that the housing is parallel to my peep at full draw. And this is super crucial for shooting uphill, downhill. So a lot of guys out west, super duper important. Um, just because, again, as you go further out in distance, things get amplified. If you're shooting at 20 yards, I really don't care. If we're shooting at 40 and beyond, it becomes really critical. And that's why we always make sure that on every bow we send out the door, anyone who comes in and purchases a sight from us, we go through the whole gamut on axes just to make sure that everyone is fundamentally sound from point A to Z. All right, guys, got the new bow all set up, PSE Fortis, ready to rock, tuned. Really excited to get to the range and get that thing sighted in. It feels great, it's shooting great. Um, thanks so much for following along with the video. I really hope that the little tidbits of info that Grady were giving you is going to be helpful to you guys. Um, Ross Outdoors, if you're in the Phoenix area uh, and you need a good pro shop, come check these guys out. I've been going here for a really long time. They've always treated me right. And uh, I, 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 this is where I go. I don't take my stuff anywhere else. So that's going to do it for the video. If you like the channel, please hit subscribe. If you like the video, please hit thumbs up. And until next time, stay safe out there.